I'm Bob Henderson. I'm the Nomad Dad. Some of the topics I discuss with you are my ideas, but I love getting suggestions from the Nomad Capitalist staff, the executive producer and uh, her staff there. And they've asked me to talk to you today about U.S. politics, a part-time resident's perspective. As you know, we're in the U.S. part of the year. We're permanent residents of Mexico in Mexico part of the year. I'm not sure which I consider home. The more I spend in Mexico, the more it feels like home to me. But anyway, the first question is, have your views changed? And my answer to that is largely no. I've always been really pro-freedom and pro-free market. And frankly, we don't have a free market anymore. I'm not sure we have much in the way of capitalism. I could go through why I think the number one reason is for capitalism to be intact, you have to have something called price discovery. And with the fact that we had uh, zero interest rates or near zero for too many years, that is not price discovery. The government is setting uh, a rate here at zero, and it just it just skews uh, economic uh, decision-making, uh, usually not in a good way. We probably have a lot of moral hazard involved here, and it's going to come home to roost at some point in time. But Definitely a free market guy, not unfettered free market. You need sensible regulations. I think the one thing that I have changed in my many years, and I followed this. When I was growing up, my father was very politically involved. Our congressman used to come to our house frequently. The governor would come to our house when I was a little kid on occasion to visit my father. My father was uh, a delegate to uh, the Republican convention in 1964 in San Francisco. It was fun to go there then. I went with him, I think I was 11 years old. I'm gonna come back to that in just a moment briefly. But one thing I've changed my mind on, I used to think that us getting involved, the US getting involved in, in some of the foreign conflicts uh, made sense. I have definitely changed my mind on that. You look at the Vietnam War, what a waste. I know we were fighting supposedly communism. I think it was more about oil. But look at that senseless war with no direction. We really didn't try to win the darn thing. 50,000 American boys needlessly lost their lives. How many people in Southeast Asia needlessly lost their lives? That was a tragedy. And I think that we're just, we've just overextended ourselves, like in history most empires have done, and that's one of the reasons they eventually collapse. And we are in too many places. I fail to see where our interests lie. As far as NATO is concerned, I really don't want more countries in NATO that we would then have to defend. Andrew lives in a couple of these countries, Republic of Georgia, Montenegro, for instance. I don't see where our interest is there. I really don't. I'm not pro-Russia. I will say that I understand that they don't like NATO on their doorstep, and we promised them we wouldn't do that 30-some years ago, and we have, and I think that's a problem. So I've changed my mind on, on our involvement in these wars. I think very few of them uh, make any sense. I'm not sure where the American interests lie for the broad public, maybe a few politicians, but that's not what it's supposed to be about. So I'm a pro-freedom guy. I'm a pro-free market guy. How things have changed, I'm asked to comment on the political landscape of the 60s, 70s, 80s. I can say, on a non-financial uh, basis, we're a much more secular country today than we were then. I'll give you a quick example. I told you my father was politically involved. I used to go with him to the county fair and hand out campaign literature. And I would go down, that was, of course, on the Republican side, and then I'd go down to the Democratic uh, side. And the one thing that stuck with me as I looked at particular candidates' brochures and their bios, everybody in both parties would list their church affiliation. You won't see that today, particularly on the left to center candidates. And it's been a long time since that's the case. Much more secular country. Financially, I remember there was a crusty old senator from Illinois named Everett Dirks, and there are many buildings in Illinois named after him. And a comment that he made was, because he was a fiscal conservative. Well, we spent a billion here and a billion there. Pretty soon you're talking real money. <laughs> well, let me put it in perspective for you 60 years later. Last year, the U.S. government spent $7 trillion. That's $19 billion a day and $800 million an hour. That's almost a billion dollars every hour. And Dirksen was complaining about wasting a billion here and a billion there, and pretty soon it's real money. We do that in an hour. 
I don't know when it's going to happen. I thought it would have happened by now, but we cannot keep going as we have with this prolific at spending. Jamie Dimon, chairman of Chase Bank, the largest bank in the United States, says this is the most dire situation financially in decades. Jamie's a left to center guy, so he's not some kind of right wing lunatic that's a gold bug and so on and so forth. This is what he says. And I remember a few years ago when he said, if we do not fix this problem ourselves, it is going to be imposed on us from outside. And I think that he's on to something. My criticism is, is what has he done to advance the fixing of it? I don't think much. I talked about the Republican convention in 1964. The candidate lost big that year, Barry Goldwater, but he made a comment that I thought made sense then and rings true today. Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. I'm not talking about being destructive and killing people or hurting people or defacing buildings or burning them down, but speaking out for freedom and the Constitution of the United States' greatest document in history, in my opinion, because it gives the American public rights that the government cannot abridge. And that's the beauty of it. The government shall not, the government will not, the government cannot. That's what the Bill of Rights First Ten Amendments are all about. And all Goldwater said was extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Peacefully. We had a tough decade in the 70s. We'd spent too much money. We were fighting a war, spending too much on social programs, created lots of inflation. Nixon exacerbated it, taking us off the gold standard. The Arabs came in, imposed higher uh, prices, uh, oil embargo, so on and so forth. Oil was a major contributor to the inflation of the 70s. But the 80s, we began to fix things. It was painful, but we fixed it. And the 90s continued with policies that promoted freedom, both individual liberty and financial freedom. And we had the two best decades economically of my lifetime under both a Republican and a Democratic president. I think the 90s with Bill Clinton, a little more libertine rather than liberty oriented, but nonetheless, he mostly left intact the policies of the 1980s that created an economic boom that lasted for 20 years. And under administrations of both parties, we've come nowhere near that over the first almost 25 years or quarter century in the 21st century. We've abandoned free market principles. The government's encroached. They've been in the business of being in business. They've, they've taken away a lot of what business does best and it doesn't work and it never has. And that's why we're looking at economic growth rates way below the trend rate. Post-World War II, 1945, for a good 60 years, the trend rate of economic growth on an annual basis was about 3.3%. It's about a percent below that. You say, well, Bob, that's not much. Well, over years, and it's been 15 years now since the great financial crisis, that's trillions of dollars of lost economic opportunity and a lot less money for the average person to have and spend and save. It has a long-term effect. This is what's been going on in Europe for years, and their standard of living is easily 15% uh, on average below the United States, and we're heading in that direction. Those are my, my concerns, and those are the changes politically in, uh, over the decades that I've been asked uh, to talk about. I lived it those two decades, the 80s and 90s. We haven't come close to duplicating that. I think that that's very sad. So I still love Dirksen. A billion here, a billion there. Pretty soon you're talking real money, and we spend almost a billion dollars an hour today. Can't go on forever. Leave a comment below. Perhaps I can address it in a later episode. I'm Bob Henderson. I'm the Nomad Dad.